What's up, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of our realm play here in the Mossy Reach. I'm your host, Omledu, and today we're going to be looking at the Education Edition. I'm also going to show you my Sky Farm and try to give you some tips and tricks on building your Sky Farm. So stay tuned till the end where I'll have all the crafting recipes for the Education Edition. Last episode, I showed you my strip mine, and so if you fly from my strip mine a couple hundred blocks this direction, you will eventually come to my sky farm. This is where I'm building and where I keep all my stuff, and the reason I built this here is that underneath it, there is an ocean monument. Looky there. So someday we're going to farm these cute little guardian guys and get some sea lanterns and stuff. But that is a project for another day. For now, we're just going to work on some basic farms. We need to get, like, you know, furnaces and mob farms and food farms and, I mean, everything. You know, starting from scratch is, is quite the uphill battle. But once you get them built, they're there forever. So a sky farm seemed to be a good place to start. You know, get my, get my materials up and running so that I can build whatever I want. I started off, as always, by measuring out chunk borders so that I know where the redstone will be loaded and where mobs will spawn and things like that. I like to have all my farms going at the same time so I get everything while I mess around. And oh no, there's a creeper! Oh man, that almost knocked me off. Oh man, I can't believe I, uh, I landed that. Man, this is supposed to be safe. You know, building a sky farm, that's the point of a sky farm, is that it's safe and things. Uh, oh man. That was scary. I don't approve of such nonsense. I also don't approve of creepers spawning in my mob farms before I'm done. I don't even have like a trident to put in the trident killer. And this back is open so we just gotta... What? No! No! I was far enough away! No! That's so sad. It's not all bad though. Looky here! We have skeleton horses hanging out on our sky farm. That's cool! We just have to go kill the skeletons off top. And we're going to have the horses hanging out. How cool is that? I love these things. They look really, really fancy. It's kind of hard to hit the skeletons, though, with them shooting you all the time. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I killed one. Oops. No. Be more careful, I guess. You know, but that's okay. We got three of them. Look at here. We got three skeleton horse things. And Oh, no. These came out of nowhere. These surprised me. I'm glad I had food and hearts and stuff, like... I didn't even notice they spawned. I was just messing around and now they're attacking me. My goodness. But look at there. Now we have a bunch of horses. Like, that's cool. And now let's talk about sky farms. So I like to have all of my farms loaded and going at the same time. Like, no matter where I'm hanging out in my sky farm. And so on realms, the simulation distance is four. That means that anything four chunks away, like this gold farm, all the redstone will be loaded and working. Um, but like this corner piece over here, that one's five chunks away. So if there was redstone there and I was standing right here, then the redstone won't work in that corner piece. Um, so these gray corner pieces are like less safe because if I'm wandering around in my farm building or something, you know, they won't necessarily be active. And so you also have like entity distances. Um, so as you can see, like these horses will disappear. Same way with like item frames or armor stands. Anything that's an entity uh, vanishes when you get like a certain distance away. Uh, so if we look at this horse down here and then like I, I like jump around, it'll it'll vanish like so. I mean, so that's entities, but like mobs, um, mobs spawn between 24 and 44 blocks away from the player. So like even if that gold farm was turned on right now, it wouldn't be spawning mobs because I'm like really far away. You know, like the redstone would work, but the mobs wouldn't spawn. To get the mobs to spawn, you need to be in between 24 and 44 blocks away from where you want them to spawn. So it's nice to just hang out in like the center chunk of your farm, for example. Build your mob farms like 22 blocks away from the center chunk, and then build your crops that you touch like next to the center chunk, and then anything else, you know, build it in these corner chunks, you know, like squid farms or automated crop farms, things that you don't need to touch. Also, mob spawning is circular around the player. Uh, so like 44 blocks above your head and below your feet, like mobs will not spawn. And then these corner pieces, are only like half active because they're more than 44 blocks away diagonally and things like that. 
Uh, so yeah, just leave the corner pieces for farms that you never are going to touch. You never need to turn them on. They don't really spawn mobs that are important. And build the things that you actually touch in these adjacent chunks. Uh, so I, I, I do recommend building your sky farm five chunks wide and then having these little, these little, I don't even know what to call them, corner, corner chunks that are less safe. It, it, it's a nice size. Like basically no matter where you are, you know, everything will always be active except for like those corner chunks if you wander too far. You know, so you can leave those corner chunks for like things that don't matter or just like aesthetic things to like hide all your farms eventually. Um, but yeah, you know, like things that you touch, it's nice just to be able to, you know, exit your center chunk for a short amount of time and then come back to your center chunk so that you know that all your farms are going. You know, it's the same way with, you know, any sort of non-automated collection system where you actually have to, like, touch it. You know, but things like this squid farm, you know, you never need to interact with this squid farm. It doesn't matter if it's spawning squids or not. You know, it just, it will when you wander near it. But like a gold farm, you know, you actually have to turn it on. Like, you care about the mobs spawning. You don't want it to be on, but not spawning piglins. You know, that would just cause, like, unnecessary lag and stuff like that. It's also nice, now that experience has changed a bit, to, to funnel your experience to your center chunk as well from all your different farms. I really am so sad about the furnace changes. Like, you know, the, the furnace storing experience, or like, whatever you want to call it, that was amazing. I mean, it actually gave a reason for like a furnace to stay put. You know, and for you to build, like, massive furnaces. But now, I mean, you don't get any experience, basically, from furnaces. So they're just, like, no point in even building, like, a big furnace. But anyway, enough about furnace rants. You know, so stuff like your dripstone, again, if it's, like, manual collection, you know, you want it kind of nearby. But, like, this squid farm, you know, you only touch it to grab ink out of it. And eventually I'm going to run the ink into, like, a chest room underneath the center junk. So... Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's kind of nice. Like, I am experimenting with these water streams on these mob farms uh, so I can actually fix my gear now that furnaces don't work. Um, and then I have this little safe AFK room still um, just in case I need to, you know, leave. I don't want to be killed by a, by a random mob or something. And to wrap up the sky farm portion, we're going to talk about my gold farm really quick. My gold farm up there. And so if you turn it on... Um, you can stand here and the experience will come to you down this little ice path. Um, I noticed a weird little bug where you can't actually see the experience at the moment, which is kind of strange. You can see it like trapped in the trident killer, but you can't see it, you know, coming down here to me. A uh, very strange little bug. But then I added this um, little thing right here. So like the, the lever uh, sends a signal over here through there and then down to this torch, which then like starts this timer. And then once the lever is turned off, this timer keeps the trident killer going until it's done. So if there's like piglins that are stuck in the trident killer that haven't died yet, you know, they'll get killed and it'll turn off by itself. Like so. I like that. And so another thing I did is I ran the lever up here to like the, this is the normal like on off section for like a gold farm. Uh, but I added this comparator right here that's looking at the dispenser that has the bucket of water. So whenever a bucket doesn't have the water in it, it'll have an output of one. But when it does have the water in it, since it's a non-stackable item, it'll have higher than one. It'll have like two or three, I forgot exactly. Uh, but either way, so this thing just pings the dispenser whenever it notices that it still has the water bucket inside. So it keeps the portal turned off so there's no nonsense. And then this just locks the comparator so that it doesn't freak out while it's turned on. Um, and yeah, so this keeps it, you know, from messing with my main portal. So like to demonstrate, if we turn it on and turn it off, it always lands in the off position. We wouldn't want to be teleporting into our gold farm when we come through the nether portal now, would we? Really quick, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. I can't do it without your support, so be sure to do that. I was on my way to check my mail, and look what I found. More skeleton horses. This is like a skeleton horse episode. That's like, what, 12 so far? Uh, but look, we have the Education Edition crafting table things. Sweet. So normally, these are creative only, but the admins spawned a bunch of them in when they created the world, um, and they give a set to new players. You know, so this is, this is a survival realm. It's not a creative realm.
But let's check out this material reducer now. So it looks like if you put normal blocks in, you get these education edition blocks out. Um, I think this is the only way you get this cool question mark block. Um, and it looks like not everything can go into the material reducer, only certain things. Uh, but it looks like it shows you what those things are made out of, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but look at these question mark blocks, they're so neat, I love these. These are like my favorite part of the education edition so far. Um, let's check out the element constructor. So if you remember your periodic table, as I'm sure all of us do. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's funny, I couldn't. Oh god. Oh, anyway, anyway, so this is how you make atoms or elements. Uh, so you put input the protons, electrons, and neutrons, and you get the corresponding atom. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So a basic rule of thumb I noticed is to put the same number of protons and the same number of electrons and then a similar number of neutrons. Just kind of slide the neutron bar near the other ones until an icon pops up. And so if you know the atomic number of what you're trying to get, you know, put in that number of protons and electrons and then just start guessing at the neutrons. Uh, but let's 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 go over the lab table now. I haven't really messed with any of these, so I'm just gonna like we're just gonna stick some hydrogen and oxygen in here and see what we get. You know, let's see what happens. Oh, I made something. What is it? It looks flaming. That's probably not a good sign. We got some garbage. Yeah, everybody needs garbage. Okay, let's let's be more precise. Let's put in two hydrogen and one oxygen. Let's make some H2O. Let's see. Oh no, that didn't work. We got some more garbage. Uh, so maybe it's this other thing. What is this, the, the lab table? No, the compound creator. This is the compound creator. So let's put two hydrogen and one oxygen, and let's get some water. Yeah, there we go. We got water. Let's see if we can place the water. Can we place it? Nope. We got unplaceable water. How, how useful. Yay. Let's see what else we can make. Let's see if we can make something that's actually usable. Oh, look. We can make charcoal. That's usable. That's a little... That's a little too usable. That might be a little cheesy. <laughs> Let's see what else we can make. Maybe we can make something that's not cheesy. Let's see. Let's make some magnesium. Some 12, 12, 13 magnesium. And then go to this crafting table and put this magnesium with this torch. And we get an underwater torch. Look at that. That's super cool. Look at these underwater torches. How neat. These are better than sea pickles and easier to get than end rods. Let's see what else we can do. Let's see. Let's go to the compound creator. We're going to make some latex. So we need five carbon and eight hydrogen to make some latex. Looky there. We can make some latex gloves or something. But that's not what we're going to make. We're going to put the latex in here like so on the sides. So six latex, three on each side. And then we're going to put a lead at the bottom, some helium in the middle, and then some dye at the top, and we get a balloon! Look how cool! Oh my god, there's a balloon! Balloons should just be in Minecraft already. Well, now they are! Looky there, we got balloons! I can't stick them to anything. I need to find something to stick them on. Let's see, let's, let's stick them on this. Oh, it works! Oh, goodbye chicken! Bye-bye! That was amazing, I have to do that again. Where's, where's something else to stick that on? Here, come here chicken! We fly chicken fly That's spectacular. I love these balloons. This is my new favorite item in the whole game. I wonder if you can stick this on a wither. Oh man. Oh let's let's stick it to these cows. Let's see. Come here, cow. Oh no, it popped. No. You wasted my balloon, cow. You will live or or you will stay on the ground today. Let's see. Yeah, go over there. Go over there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Woohoo. Oh he floats a lot slower than the chickens do. Oh, you can, he's hes really slow. He's just kind of, he's slowing down it looks like. I wonder if he's going to stop. Let's, let's look at the cow. Hi cow. Hi. Bye cow. Moo. Man, I love these balloons. This is amazing. That was the, that was really entertaining. I love, I love these balloons. No, my balloons are popping. I don't know how to take them off of things. I don't know. Every time I... No! My balloon! Ooh, you can punch the balloon. Oh, look at that. You can punch the balloon. Oh, that's so cool. I really like that. But I don't know how to pick these up. I want my balloon back. I don't think you can pick these up. Oh, no! Oh, my balloons are popping. No, please, please, no. No, I'm so sad. Oh, my balloons.
Okay, so these are all of the atoms that you will ever actually need to make the Education Edition stuff. All of the other ones are just decoration. Um, so let's go over all the stuff you can build. So these are the colored torches and underwater torches. Uh, the colored torches are one of the chlorides with a regular torch. Cerium chloride for blue, potassium chloride for purple, tungsten chloride for green, and then for red is mercuric chloride. And then for underwater torches is magnesium. So then to make all the chlorides, go to a compound creator and put the corresponding atoms in there. I will include all of this information in the description as well in case you can't see it in the video or if you can't see the atomic numbers on those tiny little blocks or something, uh, rather than me trying to say it out loud. Uh, but for super fertilizer, you need phosphorus, ammonia, and three water. Um, and you put this into a lab table, I believe it was called. And then for bleach, you put three sodium hypochlorinate into a lab table. Um, then to make these, um, again, here you go. You can take a screenshot or look in the video description. Uh, but then to make heat blocks, you need salt, iron, water, and charcoal. You put those into a lab table. And then to make ice bombs, you put four sodium actate into a lab table. And to make all this stuff, again, here you go. Take screenshots or look in the video description. And then to make charcoal, glow ink, and sugar. So charcoal is seven carbon, one oxygen, and four hydrogen. Um, and then glow ink is one iron, one sulfur, and four oxygen. And sugar is six carbon, 12 hydrogen, and six oxygen. Those are super useful, you know, actual in-game items. And then sparklers, it's the one of the chlorides and a magnesium plus a stick. Gives you one of the four colors of sparklers. They're super fun. And then the balloon, like I showed you earlier, is six latex with a dye on top. Any of the colors of dye. A helium in the middle and then a lead at the bottom. So to make latex again, it is C5H8. And then here is a yellow glow stick. You can make any color glow stick. Uh, with six polythane on the sides, a hydrogen peroxide on the top, and then on the bottom, you have luminol. And so any color dye in the middle, luminol at the bottom, and here's how you make the stuff. There's um, like all the different colors of dye. You can make all those different colors of glow sticks. They're pretty cool. Uh, and then underwater TNT is a TNT block with sodium. It works like regular TNT, just underwater. Um, you can also make, like, hardened glass, but I don't really see the point, so I'm not going to include that. And, yeah, that's all we got for this episode. Check out what I've been doing with mini blocks. I'm really enjoying playing with them. I love the mini blocks. Uh, but the Education Edition is cool, too. I like that as well. You know, you, I love the balloons, and I love those question mark blocks. Um, but I hope you like this too. You know, don't forget to like and subscribe if you did for more adventures. And don't forget to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithms. I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a survival trick or two. And reminding you, until next time, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye.